Welcome to The Daily City with Mark Baratelli. I'm Mark, the creator and editor of TheDailyCity.com, a local culture blog here in Orlando, Florida. Mark, I'm here. Uh, before we begin, I want to make a special announcement. Uh, I have stickers now. The blog has stickers. Uh, it says Orlando is wonderful, and as you know, that is one of my core beliefs. Uh, it was uh, th these came about uh, uh, as a uh, collaboration between a local artist named Don Schreiner and myself. She did the original painting. I said I want a painting of downtown, and then I went in and photoshopped it and everything. And if you go on the blog, go to thedailycity.com, and click on the sticker it'll tell you all the locations where you can get them now into the stories transitions Orlando is part of the transitions network now this sounds like one of those things where like I'm a man and I want to transition into being a woman even though I have three kids and no judgment here but it's not about that it's about transitioning um, out of using cheap oil and using something else and they're doing a creative community gathering called from shared vision to community action it's Saturday July 17th 2010 if you don't like cheap oil transition Orlando might like you <laughs> Speaking of transition, Southern Fried Sundays is Sunday, July 18th at the Coppa Rocket. Six musical acts, classic cars, a pinup girl contest, maybe there'll be some boys in there, carnival games, a dunk tank, and a southern food and barbecue buffet included in the price of admission, which I don't know. Uh, come early and get your car washed by the Orlando Psycho City Derby Girls, an all-female roller derby team. Can you imagine that? They better be wearing the roller skates, and I want them to fall down in the suds and maybe see some bloody women. All ages are welcome until 8 p.m. All proceeds go to the Mustard Seed of Central Florida. The Mustard Seed is a fantastic uh, nonprofit organization that helps something that I don't, I don't know about. Get a sticker. Mad Cow Theater um, in downtown Orlando, which I love, just announced their 2010-2011 season. It's this itty bitty 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 building with two theaters inside it. And they do some really fun work. And uh, I wanted to go through their season and tell you which shows I am aware of and know about and uh, re can recommend. So here we go in no particular order. They're doing the show Company. It's a musical. I, I know, already off the bat you're saying, Mark, I'm not going to see a musical. I, they suck, and I know most of them do suck. But this one is really good. It was written by Stephen Sondheim. He's 80 years old now. He's going to die soon, so you should see this before he... Um, it was written in the 70s, so the music is very like bum chicka bum chick bum bum chicka bum. So if you're into that kind of, uh, and it's about marriage and about a guy who's single who wants to get married but can't find the right woman. It sounds boring and stupid, but it's really funny. It's called Company. Uh, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? This I, have we all not seen that Elizabeth Taylor was in the movie. Most of you probably don't even know who that is because you're all 12 years old. But I saw it on Broadway with Kathleen Turner, who was a little bit heavier than she was in Romancing the Stone, but I still respect her, even though her nose is a little bit flatter than it was in the 80s. Um, it's about a, a sassy married broad, and she's married to this kind of nerdy guy, and they bring this couple, this young man and woman, into their home and freak the bejesus out of them for two and a half hours. Uh, who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Go see that one. They also produced the ninth annual Cabaret Festival, and I know what you're saying, Cabaret, kill me. Um, and I don't like it either, but I go because every now and then, well, actually most of their shows are good. They do this, they always bring uh, every year the Broadway boys. This is like six guys, and it's mostly like uh, they have a full band behind them. But go check it out. Don't be afraid of Cabaret. You know, you've heard it before. People don't like it. I don't like it. Most people don't like it. But try it out. Be, an orig be a rebel. Um, or not, because I don't like Cabaret. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. 
is another Stephen Sondheim. Remember, he's going to die. Uh, musical, and I got to see it on Broadway in the 90s, uh, first with Nathan Lane in the revival. Uh, with Nathan Lane and then uh, Whoopi Goldberg stepped into the role uh, because I was actually dating someone who worked for the producer of the show so I got to see all these shows for for free because I have connections but now I live in Orlando so I don't um, but um, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum is a fantastic show so definitely go see that at Mad Cow and the rest of the plays I've never heard of so they're probably brilliant opera on the big screen now we know that opera in Orlando has died. The opera, Mobile, op, not Mobile, Orlando Opera has died, kicked the bucket, gone away. But we do these opera stagings with Mad Cow and the Orlando Philharmonic comes together and, and does these stagings. Well, if you want to see other things, uh, at the Enzian, they're, they're partnering with Emerging Pictures for a third year to present operas filmed in high definition from around the globe with English subtitles. And uh, this goes all the way from July through September. Each show is $20. And it's a a great way to get your opera fix and not have to fly to New York and see real opera. Bryce Stevens is at Mother Falcon. Okay, what is Mother Falcon? That sounds like a place where, you know, rescued birds go and give birth and then the babies die, but we still give money because rich people have nothing else to do. Mother Falcon is a custom t-shirt shop uh, on Washington Street downtown. And uh, beyond doing custom t-shirts, they, they, they're getting into the art scene. Every month they have a, they're featuring a new artist all over their walls uh, showing their work. Much like Mobile Art Show, we do Third Thursdays. Mother Falcon does Third Thursdays. And um, they're doing a special show July 8th with the art of Bryce Stevens. They've got Bryce Stevens art, free beer, and music provided by DJ Diddles. I'm not even making that up. Um, his work is uh, ink and acrylic, primarily of nude women. Yeah! On glass window panes and door frames, many of which remain in the original in the original frame. So you're buying like pieces, like paintings uh, that have been done in like like old crusty windows. They're fantastic. I had one in one of my first mobile art shows and it broke <clears throat> and I never paid him for it. The first annual homespun chick marketplace, or is it chic, is August 8th in the Winter Park Farmer's Market, and it's one of our choice uh, venue rentals. We have a guide on the blog of uh, if you ever want to throw an event, uh, we have this guide called like uh, event guide or event rental guide, and you get to places we recommend that you rent, and she chose one of our places. Uh, it's going to have 19 local artisans, all handpicked by the producer, Rebecca Wilding. Quote, and I'm going to read from my laptop. Fueled by the buy handmade movement, the marketplace is at the backbone of a growing craft culture, seeking to provide Americans that high quality everyday items are easily available at places other than the mall. Even though I love the mall, I gotta get my gap every now and then. So this is August 8th, and what's special about the homespun chic marketplace at the Winter Park Farmers Market is that the Daily City is gonna have a table there. Yes, we're gonna be handing out. Mm. Um, and that's August 8th, so please join us there. And finally, Sticks and Clones. What is that? That is a local brand of clothing. It's a local label. Uh, they make t-shirts and tote bags. And I was walking downtown. I see, What is up with people throwing their art downtown and just like hanging it on walls? I saw it. I talked to them. I made friends with them. Their website is Sticks and Clones dot big cartel dot com, but it's too hard to spell, so maybe we'll throw it on the screen later. So um, that's what we've got going on in Orlando right now. So thanks for listening. Oh, 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 one more thing. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. What is this? The Orlando Improv Festival presented by thedailycity.com is coming September 20th and 21st, 2010. We have got 12 performances from groups all over the South. Uh, we might have some groups from up North as well. It's going to be taking place at the Breakthrough Theater in Winter Park, Florida. So it is the Orlando Improv Festival in Winter Park, Florida. I get the idea. But uh, go to orlandoimprovfestival.com and learn all about it. And um, it's my little pet project. All right, now, that's it. That's all. We're done. No more. Cut.
We're back with Patrick Kahn. He is the producer of Snap Orlando, a gigantic photo event in downtown Orlando. It happened for the first time in 2010. It was a major success. Patrick, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. So how do you think Snap Orlando 2010 went? Um, well, um, I'm very happy with it. I think it, uh, it came together really well. It was an, uh, an event that was, um, you know, Put together from ground up, there was nothing uh, of that nature here. Um, what 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 it is, as you know, it's um, it was a big photography event. Uh, we put together a few programs into that show. It was an exhibition. It was um, a series of lectures, uh, workshops. We had a student competition uh, of all Central uh, Florida students. Uh, we had a cell phone competition. Um, a cell, a cell phone competition? A cell phone, like taking pictures with your cell phone? Yeah, okay. and it was very, very successful. That was called instant snappification. And uh, what it was is obviously you take a picture with your cell phone, you send it, uh, it's posted almost instantly on the website, and, uh, and, 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 and people have a chance to vote and, uh, and you know, judge them online. So we received entries we were really surprised we received entries from france from japan from australia um, how they got that i don't know but you know we had a really strong uh social networking and we mm -hmm. and and i think through that you know it went beyond the borders of just orlando and even the nation and the one thing i among many that i liked about it was that it really kind of got downtown Orlando involved because you kind of spread it out in three different locations and you kind of forced your audience to go from location to location which inadvertently got them to explore downtown Orlando and in the past few years it's it, downtown yeah. has changed and grown and I think a lot of people were exposed to downtown because your event was so spread out. Yeah well actually that was the point is, is to make sure that we have kind of a nucleus we had a strong um, center for the event and that was the um, uh, church street exchange building so what we did is we took the whole church street exchange building which is empty right now as you know and we transformed so sad it. so yeah, sad disney killed it disney and universal killed it but but we're trying to revive it and we're trying to make it a big art center and so that was kind of a, a way to showcase it uh, taking each one of those empty uh, loft uh, industrial uh, type of rooms that were really big and, and, and making them as an art gallery uh, and more specifically a phot photography gallery. Mm. And so what we had to do is obviously paint the walls, uh, we had to install our own lighting which we wanted to be very um, you know gallery like so we had you know those uh, spot lights on each one of the artworks. And those are not cheap. Those are not cheap. We had about nine, ten spaces in there, and each one was a different gallery um, theme. And, there, and there's like there's like different standards of galleries and different standards of lights. I mean, you didn't just like go to Home Depot and like buy a light bulb. Yeah, you got like yeah. official good. I don't know, like photography yeah. those lighting. Were, those were professional lights because uh, in this particular building, uh, we had um, the international show, and that's, that means that we had photographers who we flew in from different parts of the country, and those are big name. Did and they have their passport when they came in? <laughs> well, when I'm you, not kidding. When you are within the country, then you don't need a passport. You don't need a passport. So you flew them in from within the country? Yeah, uh, most of them, but... Oh, we're from America. From America. Oh, I missed that part. But I'm you're sorry. right. You're right. We did so have, I'm barely listening we did to have begin one with. You did have from one from Switzerland, and I did not ask him about his passport. But well, let's not I, talk I'm about sure that. I'm sure he he went back. Maybe there for 2011, we won't bring him back. And Anyways, so anyway, all these photographers had uh, how many were there? The number of photographers all together, yeah, yeah. um, uh, more than 60 photographers. 60. Yeah. We had uh, God. photographers coming from all around the world, and we had about I would say you know, a good half of them from here, local photographers. Oh, we we awesome. have some good talent here. Uh, unfortunately, um, you don't know that there are, there's so much talent here because, you know, they are like in little shows here. This is a show that is trying to pull together all this community uh, of great talents that are in the city, bringing outside talents from around the world to put everybody on the same platform 
and make it, you know, like a very legitimate show. The big reward that I personally got out of that is that those photographers came back to LA, New York, wherever they were coming from, saying that was a great show and Orlando is cool. So, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Where did this idea come from? Did you just make it up? Did you see it happening in other cities? Yeah, well, it's we are operating under the umbrella of a bigger company called the Lucy Foundation. This is a company in LA. Uh, it's been around for eight years, and what they do, it's a 501c3, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's a nonprofit. But what they do is promote photography worldwide. And they have programs that they do in LA, New York, in Paris, in London. One of the big um, events that they do in New York is called the Lucy Awards. And the Lucy Awards is the equivalent of the Oscars, but for photographers. So oh. the likes of Annie Libowitz or um, you know big name photographers like her, David LaChapelle. David LaChapelle. Know that but name. But he was not, not yet. I know that name. Um, yeah. would be awarded by, you know, uh, they, they have special guests, like last year they had um, they had Jodie Foster, they had Lou Reed, uh, Cindy Crawford, who were giving the awards to those photographers. Can you get Cindy Crawford to come to Orlando? We're going to try it for sure. In 2011? That, that's a goal. That's a goal. That's a goal. You heard it here first. And you had like people who had shot Marilyn Monroe and like Versace right. or something. Like, yeah. like, can you yeah, we, name we, we drop had, a little bit? I'll, I'll name drop a couple of them. Uh, one of them, the main photographer who we brought in is a le is, he's a legend. His name is Douglas Kirkland. You wouldn't know his name, but you would know his images. You know, he's uh, 75 years old. He shot for 50 years, and the first image that everybody knows uh, that made him really famous is that um, uh, you know famous picture of Marilyn Monroe when she was uh, in her bed, mm. in the sheets. Alive or dead? Alive. Alive, think, okay. For the beginning of the shoot, and okay. then I don't, I don't know. Right. But he was shooting her from above. Oh. So the, the whole photo shoot is her looking at the ceiling at him shooting down on her. And, and that had never been done before? that had not been done before. And this image is what made him famous. And since then, he photographed the likes of Audrey Hepburn, Jack Nicholson, Angelina Jolie, I mean, all you know, types of celebrities. Did you ever do Lindsay Lohan? He did not. Well, actually, I can't answer that. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe after the jail sentence, he I, might be attracted to her. I'll, I'll tell him. Patrick, thank you so much for coming. For more information uh, on his fantastic festival, it is coming back. It's an annual event. It's Snap Orlando. Dot com. 2011 in April. Word. Every now and then you're online and you see a great idea and you say this should totally be in Orlando. Well that is what this section is about, Bring to Orlando. And today's Bring to Orlando is puppet shows in traffic jams. If I can read this to you real quick. Uh, the group Super Clogger in Los Angeles will present various puppet shows to drivers caught in afternoon traffic jams from a mobile theater housed in the back of a nondescript white pickup truck, broadcasting soundtracks discreetly to the viewer's car stereo. Now, can you imagine being on I-4 and you're stuck in traffic and you're, you're cursing, you're like, why do I live in Orlando? I hate my life. Why didn't I buy a better car? Why didn't I get my air conditioner fixed when I should have, when I got that special coupon in the mail? That, and, but out of nowhere, the truck in front of you, like it's, it's one of those trucks with the roofs. It pops open and you watch like a 10 minute puppet show. And it says like, tune to this radio station to hear the soundtrack. And you hear the soundtrack. I mean, would that not blow your mind? And I know there's, Orlando has like a million people in it. So I know some of you wackadoodle people out there can take this idea and run with it. And that's what Bring to Orlando is all about. It's like, this is a great idea. Someone should be doing it. It's not that hard. Bring to Orlando, traffic jam, puppet shows.
All right, we're back, and I am very excited to introduce America to Karen Russell. Um, Karen, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Okay. Um, I discovered Karen on the sidewalks of downtown Orlando. She had her paintings on the sidewalks uh, in front of uh, a place called Blank Space, mm -hmm. Blank Space Art Gallery, Blank Space Art Lounge, and they are stunning. They are beautiful. And I begged her. I said, please, can I put your things? Please, can I do a show, uh, a, a mobile art show with your stuff? And it took a lot of hair twisting and pulling, and, and she said yes. So um, I'm glad that you're here to talk about your stuff. Um, your paintings, first of all, are gigantic. Why are they so big? I like working bigger. I don't like working small. Have you ever done like tiny little paintings? Um, I guess more like with pens, but... With pens? Yeah, like well, you, not paint, small... Oh, like drawing yeah, pens. Because, like, if somebody commissioned something for a bathroom, your paintings wouldn't necessarily fit. We could fit in bathrooms. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it, like, I mean, in a rich person's bathroom. <laughs> or, like, maybe, like, in the shower, if you put, like, a glass wall in front of it. But, I, I mean, a, your had, painting would not fit in a bathroom. I've had art in bathrooms before. You've had art in bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Your big paintings? Mm -hmm. but, but were these, like, restaurants or people's homes? Oh, I had a to Tom and some of my art was in the bathroom. <laughs> Do you see this? She puts her art on the sidewalk, in bathrooms. I saw once she did an art show in a dumpster. And I'm like, what's, please, <laughs> self-esteem. So you're, I'm elevating you now to doing an art show in a U-Haul. Yeah, moving up in the world. Um, uh, all of your ladies, first of all, all your paintings are of women. Is there a reason for that? Uh, I paint men too, but right now I'm just more focused on women. Focus on ladies. Are you like, is that like a, why? They're just more aesthetic. Better That's, sex. I'm not going to take that person. What? <laughs> what? Better, better sex, like better, the better sex. The yeah. better sex. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> um, and a lot of the paintings, uh, all of them, they're all women. Uh, I, I called it sad. My mom said they are, they're angry or questioning. And um, I was going to name your show Sad Girls. And my mom said, no, you shouldn't, because they're all kind of like questioning. She said you should name it Pregnant? Question mark. Um, Why are they all kind of... Um, just like kind of um, sad. I tried painting smiles, but it just looks really creepy. <laughs> the teeth. A smile looks know, creepy. They don't really translate. I like more um, melancholy faces. Yeah. Well, they're great. They look. They just like they're so striking. But I, I just wondered why none of them are like, you know, holding candy, you know, or you're on on horseback riding. But yeah. they're all kind of like like they're thinking about something with feathers in their hair. Mm. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of that store in the mall that I can't remember the name of. It's not American Apparel. What is the store? It's like a lifestyle concept. Urban Outfitters. Mm. Your stuff reminds me of Urban Outfitters. Is this, is this interview Cheaper going? Than is this going? Urban. Your stuff is cheap. Now, we're going we're gonna to work on that. She is in the August Mobile Art Show. And uh, we're going we're gonna to raise her prices. So when you show up, don't expect the cheap prices because we're going we're gonna to take her upscale and get her out of the bathrooms. Um, when did you start painting? I um, guess when I was 20. And how old are so you now? 27. So seven oh, years. Oh, so not a long time. Mm -hmm. You're very inexperienced. I'm learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, eventually you'll be mm -hmm. yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I've had a recent bout of unemployment, so I have lots of time to develop. My your skills. your skills, yeah. um, with unemployment, how do you afford these gigantic canvases? Because I think your minimum is like thirty by forty or something. Mm -hmm. How do you afford it being unemployed? Um, well, we're squatting in a house, so I don't have rent to pay, and um, <laughs> I still, you know, I. But where does the money pay. come from? So, so you don't have you don't have to pay rent, but that doesn't mean where does the money come from for the canvases? I just sell art or stuff on eBay or Craigslist, whatever. Do you sell your paintings on eBay? Sometimes. Do you sell your paintings on uh, Etsy? Uh, I put stuff on Etsy, but it just gets drowned out real fast. By all but, the yeah. crafting yeah. teddy bears. Yeah, people to buy beads and baby outfits and other <laughs> art. I'd like to see a painting of one of your, 
like one of your women at a computer, sad, uh, on Etsy. You know what I mean? Like with the feathers and everything. Mm. Well, you have a piece in the show. Think about it. Mm. Think about it. Um, I'll give you $25 for that. Um, the piece that I'm excited about in the, mo the August mobile art show is you got, it's, it's like five feet by six feet, or si it's six feet by five feet, right? Yeah, somewhere around there. And, and it's three women, and they're like muses, or they're... Uh, they're sirens. They're sirens, and that's from like Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the idea for that? Uh, just Greek mythology? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just in a series that's loosely based on Greek mythology. You're doing more gigantic paintings? If I can afford the canvas. That canvas yeah. with the, with, by, bought with money that we don't know where it comes from. No, I sell paintings. You sell, uh, sure, mm. sure you do. I'm mm. kidding. Um, and you'll sell more at the show. Um, are you excited about Mobile Art Show? Yes, very excited. Are you lying? No. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited Because her too. stuff is really good. It's like beautiful. Like, I'm not going to say any names, but... Well, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but there's a lot of paintings on sidewalks in Orlando that I just, I, I don't, I don't, no, that's a paint, that's technically a painting, but it's ugly. And yours are like beautiful and stunning. And I remember telling you when we, we, when we met about the show, I said, we are not, not none of your paintings are going to touch the ground. I just think it's like, it's, it just devalues the, the painting, so it's a, it's a compliment to you. You're welcome. <laughs> I like you. No, I don't like you. I like your paintings. You don't like me? <laughs> uh, no. So this has been Karen Russell. She is the featured artist for the DailyCity.com mobile art show. It is going to be August 19th, 2010 in downtown Orlando as part of Third Thursday. And the way you can uh, find the show is it's the show inside the U-Haul. Karen, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for watching The Daily City with Mark Baratelli. I appreciate your time. Next week we're going to have Mariah Carey, Linda Lavin, and Shirley Temple all on the show for the biggest show you've ever seen on internet television. Until then, I'm Mark Baratelli, and remember, Orlando is wonderful. <laughs>